This is Aussie Mac Zone. We'll cover everything Apple, including Macs, iPhones, iPads, and more. All this from an Aussie perspective. Sit back, relax, and insert yourself into the zone. The Aussie Mac Zone. Hello, everybody, and welcome to show 172 of Aussie Mac Zone this week. Uh, just before we go on hiatus, we've got a few stories to go there. So don't forget, we are brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au with Australian service, and um, which you'll be using to, not, to, to download some things I've got for you. Uh, affordable and competitive plans, 99.95% uptime. And the thing that even Glenn commented on this week was um, we use cPanel, industry standard, user-friendly, feature-rich control panel from $5.95 per month when paid annually. And Glenn was picking on me, but it took me two seconds to upload what I had to upload tonight, just from the cPanel. Create a new folder, press a couple of buttons, bang, there we were. So, Garth, how are we tonight, my fine feathered friend? <laughs> G'day, Michael, how are you? Where the hell Good. are these feathers? I haven't seen them. Bloody hell. Have I got feathers growing on me? Yes. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> it's that time of year. Okay, fair enough. I'll try not to take off mid-show. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I hope I pronounce it right. Niantic confirms Pokemon Go for Apple Watch is still coming. Late last week, it was reported development had ceased on the app for the Apple Watch, but this has been denied by the company. So, I thought we'd start with something very important. <laughs> We're still working on it. We're just really slow. <laughs> yeah. It's in the same department as the AirPods, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now, now for the series, the bits. Um, NBC reports. Here's what was the most fascinating thing about tech leaders meeting with Donald Trump, according to Kara Swisher. After a meeting between technology leaders and the president-elect, what went unsaid may have been more telling than what was. Most technology CEOs that met with Donald Trump this week have been silent, and that says a lot. Recode's executive, Eric Harris Swisher, told CNBC on Friday. Interesting, interestingly, none of them put out statements to their employees afterward, which is a very typical way executives go to these big, important meetings, Swisher said to Squawk Alley. There wasn't a peep out of any of them. There's a lot of discomfort within the employee ranks. A lot of employers have put together statements about this and signed different things about Muslim registries and things like that. Rico reports from the meeting, after the press left and the doors were closed, the visitors from the digital world actually did try to bring up a number of substantial major issues with Trump and those gathered there. Trump's three eldest kids were present, which most sources close to the executives and no, I'm not saying which ones, thought was inappropriate on a number of levels. They took up three seats that should have gone to key tech people, said one source, pointing to the odd absence of Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey. Uh, and, and that's the funny one because that's the way Donald does all his work. You know, like he sends out so many tweets. Yeah, it's um, weird, isn't it? Yeah. Another source said that the conflict of interest seemed to clear while another just laughed and joked. The US is now a family business, I guess. <laughs> As it is kind of, there's a lot of, well, where do we start with the weirdness when it comes to Trump? But, you know, there's, <laughs> yeah, that's right. there's a lot to be going around. And having the family, they're like, you know, they're, they're, yeah. Yeah, so many. But but yeah. then, then it comes up with uh, one tramp, one tramp, one Trump family member <laughs> did rise same to thing, a level of thing. interest for the group. Son-in-law and chief whisperer, Jared Kushner, who kicked off the session and seemed more engaged than any other administration member there. It was clear that Kushner was the one thinking about this stuff and framing it, said one source with knowledge of the meeting. At the top of the gathering, uh, Microsoft CEO Satya Nandela brought up perhaps the most thorny issue, immigration and how the government can help tech with things like H-1B visas to keep and bring in more talent. Nadella pointed out that much of the company's spending on research and development was in the US, even if 50% of the sales were elsewhere, so that immigration would benefit those here. 
Surprisingly to the group, Trump apparently responded favourably. Let's fix that, he said, without a specific promise, and then asked, what can I do to make it better? Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nothing too specific, like you say. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's a politician. Um, Apple CEO Cook brought up a related issue, that of science, technology, engineering, and math education, which has been a big initiative of President Barack Obama and was also uh, was also was pushed by Trump's campaign rivalry, rival clear, clear, oh, bloody. I should have had a few drinks myself Hillary <laughs> um, Trump said little about stem in the campaign and when he addressed it in a debate it turned it into a speech about school choice and state control of educa- education the stem issue was also pushed hard by Facebook COO Sandberg, who foc- focused Trump on what on that kind of education for women and underrepresented minorities. She then brought up the issue of paid maternity leave. In the campaign, Trump unveiled a plan for six weeks of leave for women, while Clinton was advocating 12 weeks for parents of either sex. Trump also agreed to look into her suggestions and called on Vice President-elect Mike Pence to work on the issue, although concrete next steps were not discussed. Uh, One of the most interesting exchanges was with Alphabet executive Eric Schmidt, who briefly noted that that he pondered what he would do if he were president and then made the point that government information technology programs were antiquated and unsafe and needed to be upgraded. Schmidt then suggested to Trump that he be the software president, a phrase Trump misheard as soft president. (laughs) Trump was never going to be soft and laughs all around. (laughs) Yeah. So I've got some links there. Um, One of the links failed in Safari. Then when I opened it in Chrome, it told me to turn off my ad blocker. So just be aware of that when we're doing the links. But yeah, a, a lot of things came up at the meeting. Another one I heard was, um, I think it was Schmidt again, was just wondering about whether they could get um, DC power instead of AC. It's got something to do with the batteries and the electric cars and stuff, I think. What? <laughs> what, in, in general well, homes? Yeah. Okay. It's just thinking out loud. It's a thinking out loud session, so. Yeah, no, I don't think so. You don't think so? <laughs> No. <laughs> That's just kind of weird. Um, Yeah, I don't know. D- did he say anything? Did Trump actually say or commit to anything? I, I, you know, there's a few questions raised by everyone attending, but was there anything substantive from Trump himself? And it seems no. Uh-huh. Um, so, yes, I don't, I don't think there was any anything, but then again, yeah. no one's really willing to comment yet, so... Why would that be? Because there was nothing to comment on, maybe, or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take every all the uh, platitudes that he that he did speak with a grain of salt and think, okay, yeah. Um, all right, we're just checking whether we're having an issue with your audio. Can you just talk again, my friend? Yes, I can talk quite a lot sometimes, given the chance, uh-huh. given the desire. Because I'm hearing you. Um, just one more sec. Just turn the TV up again and see if you're getting anything. Sorry about this, everybody. Give us a talk, Garth. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Won't get it on the V. Won't get it on the VU, mate, because that's only me. Yeah, is that what? But you're getting it on the. You're getting a little bit on the bar above oh. me. There. Only a little bit. One, two, three. But you can hear him Testing, there, testing, probably. testing. Yeah. But can you hear him on the TV? Oh. That's different again. <laughs> Just talk again. Hello. Holy dooly. And can you hear me on the TV? Yeah, we can definitely hear you. <laughs> well, I can. <laughs> yeah, keep putting the, t- yeah, put up the volume up, heaps. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Got nothing. Wow, that's pretty clever. Both ways. Um, Two, five, and back again. Maybe it stops when it's ready. All right, drop it back. Or hit the mute button. We'll keep going, and we'll just see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I can always send you the sense of recording. If you yeah, yeah, I can do it again. Ah, 
the challenges of life. Been a funny life already. I don't know. Um, so. Apple gifts to retail employees this year included a cardstock printed credo and a limited edition T-shirt. And so if a staff member is listening and would like to dispose of these, give us a call or an email. Yeah, Garth at <laughs> Audio Pizza, quickly go through. <laughs> Particularly like a T-shirt. <laughs> so we've got uh, a $44 million R&D investment buys Apple the right to sell the iPhone 7 in Indonesia. 9 to 5 Mac is reporting Apple has been granted the right to sell the iPhone 7 in Indonesia following an agreement to invest around $44 million in an R&D centre in the country, reports Reuters. The investment was first rumoured in November and it has now been confirmed by a senior government official in a text message. Apple has commented... Sorry, Apple has committed around forty-four million to invest in R and D over three years. Sura Warren said, "Therefore, they can distribute devices priced six million rupee or four hundred and forty-eight dollars and above. That means all iPhones can be distributed. Indonesia is an extremely important market for Apple, as the world's fourth most populous country after China, India, and the U.S." Indonesia has adopted a similar rule to India, effectively requiring foreign companies to create jobs in the country to gain approval to sell their products there. Both countries have a requirement for companies to source at least 30% of their products locally. In the case of India, this is needed to be able to open branded retail stores, while in Indonesia it's a condition of selling LTE products above a certain value. In Indonesia, the local investment threshold can be met by any combination of manufacturing, software development, or other investment in the economy. So, what and do you think? lucky too. I wonder if there's been a um, a rampant black market trade in iPhones to Indonesia up until now. It's it's not a market that I'd even thought of, but yeah, the, the world's fourth most populous nation is. You know, it's a bit of a surprise actually. I. Yeah, I know. I I've known that before, but you sort of forget. <laughs> you know, that's, a, yeah, that's a, a bloody lot of people. Yeah, and I'm sure they've got a lot of iPhones there already. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. There must be a fair, a fair old black market trade there. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have to think so. Yeah, so you know the manufacturer thing. Uh, thankfully, they can do it in in research. So I wonder what that really means on the ground in Indonesia. Um, I guess, you know. Well, probably. even things like um, Apple in the Philippines got a fairly big, uh, say, if if I'm doing a what they call a GSX inquiry and I have a chat with either tech support or you know, how to help you with repairing mm-hmm. a machine or pro- problem with shipping, um, other things like that, it's all done uh, through the... In my day period, it's all done through the Philippines. Yep. If I do it really late at night, it usually gets to Texas. Yep. I have spoken to people in in, uh, in Ireland before that, so yeah. it just depends on the time of day. Ireland's one of those nations where they had to uh, make a uh, presence, <laughs> <laughs> a <laughs> kind of kind of a present, but you know, really <laughs> an artificial yes. presence, I guess, and. You know, it, what is a basically an artificial presence turns into a kind of real presence, you know? Yeah. yeah. Whether it be, yeah, outsourcing. Well, the Philippines is Apple's Asia-Pacific headquarters, as far yeah. as I'm aware. Yeah. So, um, now the Apple AirPods are now shipping to pre-order customers. Absolutely, Co- they are. Yeah. Customers lucky enough to have snagged a pair of Apple AirPods when podcasts, uh, product sales went live last week recently received word that their orders have shipped and are scheduled to arrive as promised on December 21st. Uh, supposedly you can also go into a store because some stores are getting them as well. I don't know whether that's in Australia or only in the States. Well, um, um, you know, when I got in and ordered mine, yeah, they um, had an arrival date of the 19th. Okay. And here they are. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that, bloody. Mate. So, yeah, they arrived on time um, <laughs> and work beautifully. Excellent. The, um, <laughs> did you have more of that story? 
<laughs> so I, I thought I'd just bring that on you. I wasn't going to tell you ahead of time. <laughs> Jealous as. So um, I don't know. What was it? Wednesday morning, I think. Yeah. I woke up and found the email from iMall that had come in about two o'clock in the morning, but I was up at, you know, five getting ready for work. Went straight on. I'd already pre-configured them in the app. So this is three hours after they'd been announced anyway. After, well, after I heard from iMore that they were available, yeah. um, I had them pre-configured in the app. Just click, 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 three clicks and I'm, I was done. <laughs> um, and they, yeah, had a shipment date of the 19th. So it was interesting to see all the US guys are getting shipment dates of the 21st. Like every podcast I've heard, it's, you know, 21st. Just, yep, that's the first date. But just, no, just not Just a little bit further away. Um, yeah. And that's, that's the 21st, their time. So that's yes. like our 22nd. So, um, no, they're, they're fantastic, man. So yeah, they are just to give context of this, you know, there's, there's really in terms of the earpiece itself, it's exactly yeah. the same as the current earpods. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the only, the length of the stem is exactly the same as the earpods. It's just a bit thicker. As yeah. you can probably see there, I don't know how clear that is. A bit higher up. A bit okay. higher up. Yeah, that's there better. There we go. Oh, so yeah, it's just a little bit thicker. Not, yeah, not much. Not much thicker, but everything else is precisely the same dimensions. Um, the little hole in the end there, which may be the microphone, or could be actually where they charge, because they sit into the case. Yeah. Like that, you know, you just put the stem in. And away you, you think go. the microphone would be there too, don't you? So. Yeah, it seems likely. Um, some reports, you know, having people listen to them, they sound like any other Bluetooth headphones in terms of the microphone. In other words, not the best, you know? Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to be the same as having a microphone close to your mouth. If you've got a microphone up near your ear, it's never <laughs> going to work all that well. Yeah, you've got to be in a very quiet environment. You've got to be in a quiet environment, exactly. But the quality, to me... The quality of the audio that you're listening to is a bit better. Not a lot better, but a bit better. It is better than the current AirPods, the normal yeah. AirPods. Not substantially, but yeah, you can hear it's you can hear it's a little bit bassy, a little bit you know, a little bit bassy, a little bit more top end um, than the current AirPods. The pairing was incredibly easy. Literally, pull them out, open that next to your phone. And yeah. you'll get a little pop-up on your phone saying, do you want a pair? Um, all I have to do is, yeah, <laughs> open the lid like that. And it popped up straight away with, do you want a pair to these? You know, a little thing. AirPods, pair? Yeah, okay, cool. click, cool done. Ads. And it yeah. was it. And about five minutes later, I thought, oh, I might try my watch. So I just went onto the music app and the watch, started something playing, and it switched straight over into the, into the AirPods. Yeah, yeah. Um, haven't tried them on the Mac yet, but I will do that for too long. Um, superb yeah superb so and they even came out with pricing this week for um if you lose one or you break one or you eventually you'll have to get the battery replaced in the little box yes and they came out with pricing for those too so it was 69 dollars us or 45 dollars us yeah um, so basically which is, which is fair enough i think that's all right yeah i was hoping it was a little little bit less <laughs> but yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's sort of about the about the you know price, isn't it? Yeah. A little bit more than what you couldn't, you know. It'd be stupid if you could buy them for cheaper than you could buy the whole lot, sort of thing. So yeah, yeah. And um, Renee was talking this week. He uh, dropped one in the snow. Yes, yes. And there's was some way of of actually turning the uh, turning it on, even though it's not in your ear, because you know how it's got that proximity thing for your ear. Yep. To know whether it's there or not, so you can actually bypass that. And then he turned the volume up really loud and just Found searched it. around until he could find it. <laughs> yeah. So you go into you know into um, control center, and you can go in there and manually click you know check what device you want to use the audio. Okay. Um, when you put them in, they make a nice little zing sound to tell you you know a little pairing sound basically. Yeah. yeah. Or turning on sound, and you know at that point that. Um, They've got, they've got, you know, it's the audio is coming through them. It's up and running. Yeah. Um, I've noticed a couple of times when I've had both in at the same time, it'll activate in the left first and they'll be a little bit out of sync and then all it'll, within, you know, half a second, it'll be 
they'll be in, they'll be aligned. Bang bang. Yeah. yeah. But it, that's know, the thing they spent most of the time working on. Apparently, sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. So and you know, twenty. And I should that, ask, does your wife know? No. <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> we'll get there. <laughs> well done, son. Well done. Um, they Very jealous. Yeah. But, you know, I, I had a look in the app the very next day because I was talking to someone who said, oh, I might order some too. I'm like, yeah, okay, have a look. Six weeks shipping time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I went out to six weeks pretty quick. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Um, Apple TV adds 21 new... Aerial screensavers featuring China, Dubai, Greenland, and more. And as part of continued efforts to build out its TVOS platform, Apple recently added a set of new high-definition aerial screensavers featuring stunning drone footage of exotic locales and landmarks spanning the globe. And they are really good to look at. They are really good to look at, yes. I, I really still want to know where the Ayers clear. Rock and Sydney Harbour ones are. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Still I should coming. say Uruloo, U- 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 however I say it. <laughs> U- Uluru, yeah. Uluru, that's the one. Sorry. We'd have to get permission to drive, fly the drone over. So. Oh, okay. Maybe that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, Super Mario Run tops Apple's highest grossing free app charts hours after launch. Friday morning our time, Apple's Insider was reporting Super Mario Run listed as the most popular free app on the US iOS app store while at the same time coming in at number one on the highest grossing list. The app debuted to much fanfare on Thursday. While free to download, Super Mario Run includes an in-app purchase that is all but required to actually play the game. Paying the $10 US entry fee provides a full access to all six game worlds, 20 Toad Rally tickets and 3,000 coins. Without the unlock, gamers can only play through three levels before being rate limited to 20 second tryouts. So 12 hours after launch, Super Mario Run had an average three star rating with well over 21,000 reviews. Oh. So, but we don't know whether that how many of those paid the ten dollars. <laughs> well enough, apparently. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Again, well, three stars. Yeah, it's not not the best rating, but that's all the people who didn't want to pay the ten dollars, I guess. <laughs> yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Or didn't want to have a persistent uh, Wi-Fi connection. Yeah. Well, I, I'm guessing that didn't make much difference, given the yeah. numbers. But also, they had some trouble with. Um, uh, connecting to server issues. Server load, yeah. Yeah. So, yes. There were Who would have thought it was going there? to be popular? They <laughs> think they, they think they might have thought about that, wouldn't you? You'd think, but who knows? Uh, maybe so, it'll go unnoticed. Yeah. So, don't forget to promote Aussie Tech Radio, AussieTechRadio.com, and the Apple Aussie, sorry, the Aussie Tech Security Podcast. Or the Aussie Tech Heads podcast. Um, so, yeah, Aussie Tech Radio, all day listening, enjoying it immensely. So, um, I spent some time on the weekend, mm-hmm. and, it's, and it's probably a good holiday break project for people, getting non-HomeKit devices working with HomeKit. HomeBridge is software that you download and install on your Mac your Raspberry Pi or a Linux box to allow non-certified products to interact with the home app. It takes a little bit of work because you need to install the software and then find the appropriate platforms and or plugins for your your equipment. I got my Wemo switches and lights working through the system, but those uh, Conky switches, the cheap ones I talked about last week, Mm -hmm. you can't get them to work. Yep. Okay. Uh, um, and there aren't any. No one else has made any platforms. Apparently, you can um, break them open, solder some wires, then reprogram them. Oh, but because okay. uh, it's two forty volts, I'm not prepared to do that. Yeah. Um, at that point, <laughs> at that point, I think you just go out and spend a bit of extra money on a on a compliant one. <laughs> That's right. Um, part of the issue at the moment is getting the correct version of platform or plugin because of a recent update to Homebridge and iOS ten. But now I can say to my Apple Watch, Siri, turn on the entrance light to 10%. 
and done. Well, there you go. Or set up IFTTT to turn on the front door light when I or my wife are within a designated area. Yep. Which is not, not a very big circle, and now the light will always be on because our security lights don't come on until a later time. So hmm. awesome. Awesome. And I don't know, but as you say, it sounds like the kind of project you need to do on when you've got holidays, when you've got yeah. some time yeah. to to fiddle about and uh, have a cold beer when the when the annoyances get too much. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> exactly what happened. I was doing some stuff, and I'm going, "No, nah, it's not working. It's not working." Go away. Yep. Just go away. Come back, <laughs> and then you realise that there's. I'm looking at some information that's got the accessories for the Wemo, but I've installed what needs the Wemo platform. So mm. that was just, it was me, but just going through the process, there's some really good uh, informational sites out there about it. Um, so, yeah, it was just give yourself some time and enjoy or ring. Yes. <laughs> so I've attached links to a numbers or an XLX X checklist of things to take, prepare, etc. Uh, whether you're going away on hol- traveling on holidays or traveling on, um, yeah, for business, yep. but it does include things like your video camera cable, or your hotel confirmations, or a power board, or your medication, or even making sure your contact details are with someone in case of emergencies. There's even things like. Um, what about an e- our retag and an elastic band? So let's say that when you get a rental car, you can have your retag and just strap it to the rear, rear vision mirror and put an elastic band on it. Or um, what's your retag? I don't even know what you're things. talking about. It's for uh, paying our tolls automatically. We don't have oh, toll collectors yeah, yeah, anymore. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Yep. So that's what they are. Yep. Or um, what about? Not only your hotel bookings, but if you've got special tickets, you know, if you've made a booking in your hotel, but you've gone to Melbourne, for example, for mm. one of their shows, and you've got to remember to take your tickets, your spare glasses <laughs> for for we poor people that have got to wear glasses. Yep. Or um, you're on the list, you got I've got video camera and video camera charger. You don't put them together and just say video camera and charger. You have them all separate items. And the other trick is um. When you're leaving, tick them, take take the ticks off the page or off your. I, I have have mine on my iPad. You take the ticks off when you're packing to come home, and that way, as I've done, you don't leave the e tag on the rental car. Oh no! <laughs> which I've done. Then they had to post. They had to post it back up from Melbourne for me once. But, yeah. Um, okay. It's all part of the fun. Yeah. So you had your. That's a, that's a pretty extensive list you got there. But um, is, look. Yeah, it's ten. 20 things. years of list there. <laughs> yeah, right. Far out. I just think, you know, any device you're taking, make sure you've got the appropriate cable. <laughs> just check all your devices, check you've got the right cables for charging them. And yep. um, you've always got to have a battery. I don't know. I, I like to have an, a spare battery. Yeah. 10,000, 20,000, whatever, however big you can yeah. fit. fit. Um, and as long and as... The... Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, keep going. No, and I was, I was just, just going to say, say, go for it. Go. <laughs> <laughs> a little um, I keep a spare one of these USB cables that has a number of different adapters. So you have the real proper ones. Yep. That are the actual ones, but you have a spare one that's got all of them just in case. Just in case, exactly right. Yeah, that's <laughs> so important. But yeah, the the list. I, it's even got like on the list. It's got um, where were, yeah, the Game Boy and the chargers. Yeah, from the days when my kids were playing Game Boys when they were little. But, um, <laughs> you don't still take that with you, do you? Come on. <laughs> uh, or like an underwater case for the camera. Oh yeah, yeah. You just keep putting it on the list. You don't have to tick it if you're not taking it with you. Don't tick it. You know. No, you just just um, take your iPhone seven. Depends yeah. where you're going. And like even. We're planning a trip in March. I've even printed out paper so that we've got maps for it so my wife can look up op shops or whatever in little country towns so she can 
paper maps. Now, that's not a bad idea too because, you, yeah. you know, if you can print them out and get them sorted before you go, yeah. it's, I think a lot of people still prefer to just look at the paper, you know. <laughs> I know. Well, I, I printed out a page for sort of each section of the road, but you have to make the, the Google map or the Apple map bigger so mm. you can only print a little bit of page to have the town names on the on the map. Mm. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. So security tips for your traveling. So import this are, these are important. Turn on find my phone, iPad and Mac on all your devices. It should already be on guys. Just make sure it's turned on. <laughs> yep. Set up secure passcodes and passwords on your devices. You should already have them guys. Just make <laughs> sure they're there. <laughs> Set up emergency details in the health app. You sure you have it there? Just <laughs> check that it is there. Yeah. So remember, you will have to prove your device is working when you go through security, possibly at both ends of your trip. And it has been known for travellers being delayed because they had to charge their device to prove it worked. This is the world we now live in. Yep. If your device is damaged in any way... It may not be allowed to take on the plane. Also, this has been known to happen at a flight transfer where you think, mm. oh, I've, I've made it onto the plane and then you get to Dubai or whatever and you're doing a flight transfer and they won't let you on. Jeez. Yeah. Or at least they won't let your phone on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Which could be quite devastating because you keep so much stuff on there. Make a backup of your data, computer and on devices and leave it at home. <laughs> yeah. Good yeah. plan. Don't These are all important it. things. Yeah, yeah, you totally. know how much important backups are? A copy, a copy of any important documents should be on iCloud or Dropbox, etc. So you can get them even from a kiosk if need be. Yeah. Rem That's a really remember, good tip too. Yeah. Passports, all that yeah. sort of stuff. You can have those numbers. You can Co have all that sort of information. Yeah. Saved photo, somewhere. Photos secure. of them. Yep. Save photos of them. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Um, yeah, even your hotel confirmations and things like that. Mm. Remember, bags with your carefully packed computer and chargers have been known to go to the wrong destination. <laughs> Once again, secure passwords. <laughs> Think before connecting to free Wi Fi services as you do not know how secure they are. And do not do your banking through them. Yeah, now that's a that's a big one, I think, for people because, you know, at sometimes you just get so desperate for a bit of Wi-Fi that you just think, yep. oh, it'll be right. And that could be the time when it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a challenge. Of course, you can sign up to different, you know, VPN services, yeah. etc. but you've still, there's still some challenges. So, um, Does your card work with Apple Pay? Set it up on your watch and your phone. Absolutely. Yeah. Think about using cases that hide the Apple logo on your iDevice and your Mac. Helps maintain a low profile. Also think about using a very basic backpack or laptop bag. This, this requires you to be a bit more careful as they aren't quite as robust. Uh, what? I'm not sorry. Do you use a basic one or yeah do use a basic one one that's oh. not really flash and expensive and oh okay yeah yeah i don't uh, know i'd prefer to keep one well as long as it I, <laughs> priority one i reckon is make sure the equipment's safe in there yeah um yeah but there's some that have got you know three inches of padding and some that have got half an inch of padding so just mm. just be aware of what you got that's all i ask yep um and keep your gear in sight I have had a customer lose their iPad when travelling overseas on a train. The bag is just... Oh, sorry. The the bags were, weren't in the actual cabin area. Does that make sense? Where you're sitting? Yes. Yep. Like there's the baggy, baggage area out the front. Yep. The baddies just opened their bags, rifled through, took what they wanted and closed the bag. And then you get to your next hotel room and go, where's my iPad? Well, it happened to my iPad. Yeah, that'd be pretty <laughs> devastating, wouldn't it? Yeah. All that sort of stuff, you just keep it with you. Yeah. And power tips for travel. This is very important. Remember that other countries use different plugs and sockets 
and different voltages. Apple sell a travel adapter kit, but this no longer suits the current iDevice chargers. And check that what is used before you go so as not to damage your equipment when you get there. Just a please, 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 a little bit of forward thinking there. <laughs> And now, my friend, anything yeah, else? I've run, I've run out. No, you've done an amazing <laughs> I'll, I'll job as usual. <laughs> no, don't. That's that's. I think that's it, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. No, that's that's awesome. Really great set of tips there. Yeah, that. It just they they are important. Mm. Please go through, listen to it again, and as I said, you can go to aussiemaxzone. dot com. dot au forward slash amz underscore downloads. And you can get the the list there. Um, nothing too pretty about it, but seriously, think about it. And it's got you can add your kids to it, so they, you know, one kid might have a Samsung phone for some stupid reason, but you've got to remember to take the Samsung charger. Exactly. All that sort of stuff. Check so. every device and make sure you got the right cable. <laughs> exactly right. Yep. So, and and when you're rushing around last minute, it is. Is important. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, I think that's our Aussie rap, Apple ramblings for this evening. Yeah. For Tuesday, Monday, not Tuesday. We used to do it on Tuesday <laughs> night. It's Monday night, isn't it? Old days. <laughs> Monday, Monday, the nineteenth of December, two thousand and sixteen. That's um. Or oh, AirPod Day, as it's now known. AirPod Day. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back on. Oh, I should have checked the date. When well, the first or second Monday of year. Probably the second. At second the will be yeah. yeah yeah so that'll be the eighth I think something like that something ninth. like that yep. ninth yeah so it's a su- surprise for everybody absolutely <laughs> from um from both of us I imagine I'm sure you want to wish everyone a, a happy Christmas and a and a good new year hope everyone stays safe and. Yep. You know, drives and drinks responsibly, not at the same time. <laughs> um, and you know, just enjoy the enjoy the time off if you've got it, and spend some time with your families. And yeah, see you all again next yeah. year. Yeah, thanks for listening. It's been great. Thank you, everyone. All the best. Good night.